Is evil a problem? Five. Is evil a problem? Five reasons in Islam saying it isn't. Existence of God versus evil. Existence of God versus evil. Many people, if not all of them, pass to a stage in their lives where they see or live a lot of trials. Sometimes they see evil people winning over the good. Kids being killed in wars. Women being raped everywhere. Poverty taking place and homeless people are increasing each day and many more examples that put them in front of these striking facts. Why is this amount of evil exist? If God is there, and he is all good, then why is he allowing evil to happen? Is he willing to prevent evil, but not able? Then he is impotent. Is he able, but not willing? Then he is malevolent. Is he both able and willing? Whence then is evil? It must have crossed your mind that God can create a world that is all good without people committing any evil, but since he is allowing that to happen then he might be evil himself. Well, firstly, let's redefine the term, good. We tried to understand God's attributes based on the experiences we passed through. Hence, we want to draw for God our belief about the term, good, that we know and have lived. And this is very illogical, because the word, good, needs to be understood in a divine context. To give you an example about that. The percentage of cancer patients are increasing each day. The amount of pain they go through is unjustified to many people, and they keep questioning themselves, but why? Why all this pain? Why do they have to suffer this much? Because it's good sometimes for people to feel weak. How will you be grateful to your health and strength if you don't feel weak? Because a believer is rewarded for each pain he goes through. Jabir Ibn Abdullah narrated that Allah's Messenger peace be upon him said, al 1570. On the day of resurrection, when people who have suffered affliction are given their reward. Those who are healthy will wish their skins had been cut to pieces with scissors when they were in the world. Am al Allah reported, the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, visited me when I was sick, and he said, Source, Sunan Abi Dawud 3092 grade. Sahih, authentic, according to al-Albani. Be cheerful. O mother of Allah, for when a Muslim becomes sick, Allah takes away his sins just as fire takes away impurities in gold and silver. And the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, narrated by al-Bukhari, For any adversity a Muslim suffers, Allah erases some of his sins, even though it may be no more than a thorn pricking him. Because when you are in great pain, you most probably think about death and how near it is. Every one of us need that from time to time to reorganize his life and priorities and see where he got lost and get back on track. Secondly, it's payback time. God says, And whatever strikes you of disaster it is for what your hands have earned, but he pardons much. Quran.com 4230 Whatever difficulty afflicts you, O people, in yourselves and your wealth it is because of the sins that your hands earned. Allah overlooks many of them and does not take you to task for them. Ashura 30. On the individual base, the community base, and even on the whole country base, we continuously pay for our own deeds. Whether they are small or big, starting from saying harmful evil words, ending with adultery and stealing. God states that a lot of the trials, difficulties and hardships we face are basically because of our sins and bad things we did before. And because Allah God is that just, he won't just let you run away with what you did. To understand this better, Imagine a thief who stole all your money and simply ran away. Do you wish for him to enjoy all the luxuries of life with your money without any punishment? Won't you at least wish him a distressful life? Well, that's the payback he will get for what he did to you. Thirdly, understanding the purpose of life will help you understand a lot of what's happening around you. The primary purpose of the human being is not happiness, rather it is to know and worship God. This fulfillment of the divine purpose will result in everlasting bliss and happiness. So if this is our primary purpose, other aspects of human experience are will be secondary. The Quran, the book of the Muslim states, And I did not create the jinn and mankind except to worship me. Quran.com 5156 And I did not create jinns and men except for my worship alone. I did not create them to make a partner for me. I do not want any provision off them nor do I want them to feed me. Allah is the provider for his servants. All of them are in need of his provision. He is the supreme Lord, every mighty. Nothing is outside his ability. All of the jinns and men submit to his power. May he be glorified. 
adds Zariat, 56-58. Fourthly, the truth about this worldly life. God also created us for a test, and part of this test is to be tested with suffering and evil. The Quran mentions, He, who created death and life to test you, as to, which of you is best indeed, and he is the exalted in might, the forgiving. Quran.com 67-2 The one who created death and life to test you, O people, which one of you is better in terms of actions? He is the Almighty who no one can overpower, the forgiving of the sins of whichever of his servants repents to him. al 2 I mean what's the point of the test of this world, if we don't have options to choose among them? After all, it's not paradise. Fifthly, it's a chance to know God even better. Having hardship and suffering enables us to realize and know God's attributes such as the victorious and the healer. For example, without the pain and suffering of illness we would not appreciate the attribute of God being the healer. Knowing God is a greater blessing and worth the experience of suffering or pain as it will mean the fulfillment of our primary purpose. Sixthly, suffering allows second-order good. First-order good is physical pleasure and happiness and first-order evil is physical pain and sadness. Second-order goodness is elevated goodness such as courage and can only happen if suffering or evil exist. Seventhly, God has given us free will, and free will includes Choosing evil acts You always have two ways in getting what you want. It's either the bad way or the good way. And it's you who decide. The existence of evil means that you have a free will. Eighthly, without evil we will never know and appreciate the good. Ninthly, hardships will teach you the reality. Only hardships which you may see as evil will teach you things that you may never learn if the world was only good. Such as real friends who have been there for you and believed in you when you lost everything, like speaking the truth, how to be strong and confident no matter what and many more. Let's agree on something else. My definition of evil is different than yours if we leave it to ourselves. But actually there are border lines by which we agree on evilness. And that best proves that there's God. Because without the existence of God, evil and good will be subject to human relativity, and hence there will be nothing to measure on if this thing is evil or not. So the rules that God has put for us is the measure that we have while waiting any act. This debate itself is a proof that God exists because you and I know what evil and good are based on God's measures. Do you think it's fair for a class full of students that these students all expect the full marks without even being tested? If we all expect a perfect life, then what did we do to earn that? The existence of evil is itself a test for all humanity to see how people will deal with it. And the more powerful evilness gets, the harder the test and the greater the reward. Because you believe in the promise of God that if you follow his commandments, you will enter paradise. And that's it. You believe in words. Just words. Words of God to the believer are more powerful than whatever he sees, feels and experiences. What we are seeing and living is not the final picture. Allah the Almighty says, And we place the scales of justice for the day of resurrection, so no soul will be treated unjustly at all. And if there is, even, the weight of a mustard seed, we will bring it forth. And sufficient are we as accountant. Quran.com 2147 I shall establish fair scales for the rising people to weigh their deeds with. On that day, no soul shall be wronged by having its good deeds decreased, or bad deeds increased. Even if the weighed deed is minute, like the weight equal to a mustard seed, I shall include it. I myself am sufficient to take the deeds of my servants into account. al 47 There's a day in which we will all be gathered, to behold an account for each and every single deed we did. Don't ever think that the suffering that you are seeing is the end of the world. Don't ever think that the winning of the evil is the closure of the scene. Allah will not allow that to happen. He won't. Is evil a problem? Five reasons in Islam saying it isn't. Many people struggle so much when they try to understand this world we live in when they look at the evil that exists. In this article, we will look at it as well, and we will discuss five reasons why evil isn't a problem, for Islam at least. Every soul will taste death. And we test you of humanity with good and evil as a trial then to us you will all be returned. Quran 21-35 Every believing and disbelieving soul will taste death in the world. And I test you, O mankind, in the worldly life through duties, blessings and hardships, then after your death you shall be returned to me alone and nobody else. Then I shall reward you for your deeds. 
Alambaya 35. 1. Why does evil exist in this world? How about the reason this world exists? The question that rendered tons of people sleeplessness is rather quite simple when you look at how Islam answered it. Starting by generalizing it, what is the purpose of this life itself? Answering that with the right answer gives us the satisfying answer for the first question, as evil, misfortune and suffering, etc., are all simply part of this life. So if we ever wish to understand it we need a, correct, understanding of life first. And we could only get the answer for such question from only one source, the one who created it. He, who created death and life to test you, as to, which of you is best indeed and he is the exalted in might, the forgiving. Quran 67-2 the one who created death and life to test you, O people, which one of you is better in terms of actions? He is the Almighty who no one can overpower, the forgiving of the sins of whichever of his servants repents to him. al 2 Life is simply a test. We aren't here to suffer or be punished, we are here to be tested. If you understand that, you will easily know the answer for the question of evil. Evil is just a test for us. A test whether we will choose the right choice or not. Will we believe and be patient, or just be lost and discontent? Will people choose to do good, or choose to do evil, that is also a part of it. Some evil exists because our Creator allowed us the choice, because it is a test from Him and some humans chose the evil and that corruption happens by what the hands of humans have earned. As God said in this ayah, Corruption has appeared throughout the land and see by, reason of, what the hands of people have earned so He may let them taste part of, the consequence of, what they have done that perhaps they will return to righteousness. Quran 30 41 Corruption has appeared in the land and see in the lives of people by their span becoming shorter, and in their bodies by way of diseases and illnesses, due to the sins they commit. It has become apparent so that Allah may give them a taste of some of their evil deeds in the worldly life, perhaps they repent to him. ARM 41 2. Is good a problem? Why does good exist? Most of the misunderstanding of anything is the result of having a partial or incomplete view of it from the start. It is the same in this case, looking only at one part of life and totally forgetting the other part. That is a problem. Good is a problem for those who think evil is a problem, because again, why does it exist? comes. It has the same answer as evil, it is a test. Being tested by temptations and all the things that God Allah provides us is the other part of life. Are we thankful to Him and doing the good in return, or did we forget that we are slaves of our Creator and are denying His blessings on us? Are we swallowed by ego and pride or are we still humble and doing what we were created here to do, worshipping our Lord? And although evil and good are explained perfectly well in Islam, they remain far from that in any other worldview. On the other hand, for those who look at evil and find it a problem, it would be a huge problem for them when they look at good and think of its source and why it exists. 3. Death, the end of everything. Death is the end of this temporary test that we live. Also, it's a perfect reminder that we aren't as great as we think we are. Death is a reminder that we are servants that don't really have a choice outside the limited frame that our Lord has given us. Moreover, death is the reminder that not just evil, but also good is temporary, and that they don't last. Be it a good life, a bad life, a cool life or one that is filled with suffering. It all ends. And only the consequences of our choices in this life will remain when the curtain is raised to the next one. 4. The pure justice. The life after this one. Evil is a problem for those who think that, this worldly life, is all there is. Definitely if that is what you think, then it is a big problem. But thank God, the all-just Al-Adiel, the creator who created this world, who didn't make it all there is to life. The next one, the hereafter is the life where justice is fulfilled. When all of us rise as our Creator creates us again as He did the first time. And anyone who did evil in this life, harmed another soul or committed grave atrocities and went without facing judgment will be judged. When the day comes, the judgment day, this goes for all, you, me and everyone. In fact, we all will witness all our deeds in this life and all our choices. Then, we will be judged on everything. Either, the choices regarding our relation with Allah, God, or our relation with others and even our relation with our own selves. And any injustice will be judged by Al-Adiel, the All-Just. And even if a deed is the weight of a mustard seed, we will bring it forth. 
and sufficient are we as a vigilant reckoner. Quran 21-47 I shall establish fair scales for the rising people to weigh their deeds with. On that day, no soul shall be wronged by having its good deeds decreased, or bad deeds increased. Even if the weighed deed is minute, like the weight equal to a mustard seed, I shall include it. I myself am sufficient to take the deeds of my servants into account. Alambaya 47 5. The Real Problem of Evil Evil isn't a problem to Muslims, and that is why although Muslims suffer the most now, they have the lowest rates of suicide. The real problem of evil is for those who deny all that and give no answer for the existence of evil in return. Those who often see evil as a problem don't have an answer for it themselves if you ask them about it. Thus, they only deny God using it as an excuse. Although, when you ask, Why does evil exist then? The answer is, none. To them, this whole life is meaningless, and so is evil. Whatever you do in it is meaningless, your suffering is meaningless. No matter if you are happy, or you are suffering the worst pain, it doesn't matter. Actually, when that is the case, then it is the real problem for any human with a pure heart and mind.